Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Sorry, I've been having a delay on this Zoom meeting on today. As we come to the order of service, we'll have a call to worship, an opening song by Sister Barbara Book. Then we have prayer by Sister Sturgeon. Then we have scripture by Sister Vita Emerson. Then we have our hymn of preparation by Sister Liz White. And then we have our message by yours truly, Reverend Pamela Peoples. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was <laughs> glad when he said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your God and my God, he is worthy to be praised. Hey. At this time, I'm asking that we have our opening hymn. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your word is great. And greatly to be praised. Yes, 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 yes. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name. And greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for oh, your name. And greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Yeah. I give honor to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you praise. Oh, Lord, honor to your name. We give you praise. Oh, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I turn to your name, oh Lord, honor to your name. Oh, thank you. Go out. 
let us bow our head. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord God, I give you thanks for you are good and your mercy is endless. Here I stand during this holy week. This week in which our churches remembers Jesus' passion and death. And I am distracted by many things. Turn my eyes now to the one who comes in your name. Did my phone go out? Now to the one who comes in your name, the one who opens the gates of righteousness, the one who answers when we call. We bless you, Lord, for shining your light upon us and for sending your son to us in human frailty to walk the road we walk. Open my eyes that I may see him coming and may praise him with a pure heart and walk in the way of his suffering and share also in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One. <laughs> we pray that you walk with, with us the way of son and we also share in his resurrection. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Our scripture for tonight comes from Matthew 21st chapter, verses 18 through 22. Early the next morning, Jesus was returning to the city. He was hungry. Seeing a long fig tree alongside the road, he approached it anticipating a breakfast of figs. When he got to the tree, there was nothing but fig leaves. He said, no more figs from this tree ever. The fig tree withered on the spot, a dry stick. The mm. disciples saw it happen. They rubbed their eyes saying, did we really see this? A leafy tree one minute, a dry stick the next? But Jesus was matter of fact, yes, and if you embrace this kingdom life and don't doubt God, you will not only do minor feats like I did to the fig tree, but also triumph over huge obstacles. This mountain, for instance, you will tell, go jump in the lake and it will jump. Absolutely everything ranging from small to large as you make it a part of your believing prayer gets included as you lay hold of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and especially the doers of his word. Amen. 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 My Savior bleed. And did my servant die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away roll away it was there my faith i received my sight and now i am happy all the day was it for crime that i have done he grown up on the Lord Jesus, amazing is His grace unknown, 
and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of heart roll away, roll away. It was there I, I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. Oh my, the sun in darkness hides, and the tears are Things, Sister White. Well, Christ the mighty maker died for man, the creature sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart roll away, roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Myself faith is all that I can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away, roll away. It was there I I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, praise God. Amen. Reverend Pamela, people. Amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you so much for this opportunity once again to stand before your people. I ask you, God, that Pam decrease and you increase in her. You use her for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we say have your way. Anoint me afresh. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Our text tonight comes from Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22. In the morning when he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the side of the road, he went to it and found nothing on, at all on it but leaves. Then he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they were amazed, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not die, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer, with faith, you will receive. And if I could use for a topic on tonight, it would be deception can be deadly. Deception can be deadly. Hmm. We reverence God on tonight for all the great things he has done and is going to do in my life. We honor C.J. King, the presiding prelate bishop of this fourth Episcopal district, we honor Reverend Dr. Earl Griffin and Lady Griffin, presiding elder of the Monroe District. We honor all the pastors, preachers, evangelists, lay members, visitors, the great young chapel church family, and last but not least, 
my husband, Reverend Eric Peoples. When looking at this passage setting, we see things that happened during the week before his crucifixion. Jesus had entered Jerusalem a day early in the midst of the praise and worship of the Jewish people who were looking to him as the king or as the Messiah right. who was going to deliver them from Roman occupation. The next day he is again on his way to Jerusalem from where he was staying in Bethany. On his way, both Matthew and Mark record that he was hungry and saw a fig tree in the distance that had leaves on it. Upon coming to the tree, expecting to find something to eat, Jesus instead discovered that the fig tree had no fruit on it and cursed the tree saying, may no fruit ever come from you again. Matthew records the cursing and the withering of the fig tree all in one account. He includes it after the performance of Jesus cleansing the temple of the money change. Mark explained that it took place over two days with Jesus cursing the fig tree, the first day on the way to cleanse the temple and the disciples seeing the tree wither on the second day when they were going again to Jerusalem from Bethany. Of course, upon seeing the tree wither from the roots up, the disciples were amazed as that would have usually taken several weeks. Now, firstly, it's important to note that it was not the season for ripe figs, except in certain places. But in this particular orchard, one tree appeared to be in advance of all others. It was already covered with leaves. Fig trees naturally grow fruit before the leaves open. So this tree in full leaf gave promises a well-developed fruit within it. But its appearance was deceptive. Deceptive means given an appearance or impression different from the true one or just misleading. You all know how our appearance can be deceptive. Okay. We can look holy, we can act holy, we even know how to talk holy, but we surely yeah. can't live holy. When Jesus Amen. began searching the branches, he found nothing but leaves. Oh. Look here now, now. The deception was so bad that the human side of Jesus was tempted. He was hungry. He desired something to eat. He went to the tree with an expectation to receive something. And the Bible says, and seeing a fig tree by the side of the road, he went to it and found nothing at all on it but leaves. Nothing but leaves. Because of his natural state, he was deceived. Not the God man, the fig Amen. tree deceived. Amen. Not the God man wrapped up in the likeness of sinful flesh. Not sovereignty, not omnipotent, but the God man that came through 42 generation. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. stopped by to tell someone that deception is real. It fooled my Jesus and your Jesus. Deception is still real for some of us. Well, what do you mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says, Lord, have mercy. Second Timothy 3 and 5 says, having a form of godliness, uh -huh. but denying the power thereof uh -huh. from such turn away. You may fool people some of the time, uh -huh. but what you can't do is fool, is never fool. One thing is, but what you can't do, one thing is deceiving the one who sets high and the one who looks slow. All right. This is why deception is deadly. Come mm -hmm. on here, somebody. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruits. For every tree is known by its own fruit. Uh -huh. Jesus came to his temple 
expecting to find genuine fruits Another of faith one. from his people. Instead, he was greeted with unbelief, oppositions, and the abuse of his father's house. Oh, there was religion, of course. There was religion all over the place. There were lots of offering being made, lots of scriptures being recited, and lots of animals being purchased for sacrifice. The people were even so careful about religion that they made sure that the coins of the pagan nation were exchanged into the money that would be acceptable to use in the temple. That's right. It was very religious. But all of the religion was nothing more than the mere outward promise of fruitfulness and nothing more. There was no real spiritual fruit. It was all fig leaves, but no figs. Come all on right. here, somebody. All right. Come on, well, when I Amen. thought of this, my mind went back to the first mention in the Bible of the fig leaves. My brothers and my sisters, do you remember it? It was back in the book of Genesis after Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. God warned them not to eat of the tree that was in the midst of the garden, telling them, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. But they disobeyed God, and as soon as they sinned, their relationship with God was broken. Uh -huh. They became Amen. aware that they were naked before him and they sowed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Uh -huh. Fig leaves were not an acceptable covering for sin before a righteousness and a holy God. All and right. so as we read on, we find that the co cover, he covered them in tonics of skin. For there to be a tonic of skin, something innocent had to die for the sins of others. A innocent one had to shed blood in their place. And it was like the skin of the innocent one that they were clothed. Maybe you don't know who the innocent one was. In this case, he was a lamb. But for you and I, it was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, and his yes, name yes. is Jesus. Come on here, yes. somebody. But isn't it interesting that it was with leaves of a fig tree that they sought to make themselves appear acceptable to God? You might say that fig leaves were symbolic of the first act of a man-made religion, mere outward covering, but with a heart of sin underneath. Therefore, the barren tree represents the Jews who also spread their ostentatious branches, flourishing in appearance and beautiful to the eye, but they yielded nothing but leaves. Amen. Fig leaves Amen. are bitter. Fig leaves are used for balls. When you read when you read in Isaiah, when Hezekiah had a ball, they would take the fig leaves to bring down the balls. But the fruit was used for when people wanted something to eat or quench the appetite. The Jewish religion, with it, its magnificent temple, its sacred altars, its priests, in impressive ceremonies was indeed fair in our appearance, but humility, love, and benevolence were lacking. They were corrupted by the love of the world and the greed of gain, and thus were full of hypocrisy. The Jews who had received greater blessing from God were held accountable for the abuse of these gifts. The privilege of which they boasted only increased their guilty. Thus, when Christ cursed the life out of the fig tree, he symbolically took the Jewish nation privilege to preach the gospel from them and directed it to the Gentiles. Christ acts in cursing the tree that his power had created now stands as a warning to all churches 
and our Christians. My brothers and my sisters, no one can live the law of God without ministering to others. But there are many who do not live out Christ, merciful, unselfish life. Some who think of themselves as excellent Christians do not understand what constitutes service for God. They plan and study to please themselves. They act only about themselves. Time is of value to them, only as they can gather for themselves. In all the affairs of life, this is their object, not for others, but for themselves. Do they minister? Thus those who live for themselves are like the fig tree, making every pretension but was fruitless. They observe the forms of worship, but without repentance or faith. In profession, they honor the law of God, but obedience is lacking. They say, but do not. The sentence pronounced on the fig tree, Christ demonstrate how disgusting his eyes is, this vain pretense. He declares that the open sinner is less guilty than he professes to serve God, but bears no fruit to his glory. Now, let me hurry on to my close. At every age, there is given to men their day of light and privilege, a probationary time in which they may become reconciled to God. But there is a limit to this grace. God cannot force it on anyone. We all have a choice. Mercy may plead for years and be slighted and rejected, but there comes a time when mercy makes her plea. The heart becomes so hardened that it ceases to respond to the spirit of God. Then the sweet whining voice entreats the sinner no longer and reproof and depended upon the people to whom Christ's words were spoken. The fruit this tree represents them and it rested with them to decide their own destiny. Heaven could bestow every advantage given them, but they did not profit by their increased blessing. By Christ's act and cursing the barren fig trees, the result was shown they had determined their own destruction. In this generation, many are treading on the same ground as were the unbelieving Jews. They have witnessed of the power of God and the Holy Spirit has spoken to their heart, but they cling to their unbelief and resistance. God sends them warnings and reproof but they are not willing to confess their errors and they reject his message and his messenger. The very means he used for their recovery becomes to them a stone of stumbling. They have to, they have to determine their own destruction knowing the consequences. This is why deception is deadly. Why choose death? when you can have a life. Amen. Can anyone hear me? Oh yeah. Yes, okay. yes. We hear you. It is my responsibility and honor to give the invitation to discipleship, amen. In Revelation, the third chapter and the 20th verse, our Bible states the word of Jesus Christ. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. There are those listening right now. You're hearing the voice of Jesus Christ. You may even be a backslider. You have to step out on faith. Listen. You may be like many whom when they accept Christ said, I don't really understand this being saved stuff, this salvation stuff, but I know what I feel deep in my spirit and I know I need to be saved. 
You may even say, I, I, I got to get ready before I, I, I get saved. You can't get ready. Amen. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Well, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you are, you are saved. That's Romans, the 10th chapter and the ninth verse, the word of God. Jesus is standing at the door, knocking on your heart and spirit. If you want to be saved, say this with me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Amen. You are saved. Amen. No matter what extra stuff some people may say. Romans, the 10th chapter and the ninth verse of the Holy Bible says, it is so. If you're already a part of a church, tell your pastor or someone in your church you trust about your new life in Christ. If not, find you a Christ-centered Bible-believing church. We would love to have you at Oak Grove in Maroos. I'm sure that all the CME churches in the connection would love to have you as a member. But do this. Pray about it each day for at least 15 minutes. Go to a quiet place by yourself and pray until the Lord shows you through situations, circumstances, and people where he wants you to be. Amen. You are now back into the hands of our worship leader, Reverend Peoples, and let the church of God say amen. 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 We thank you for.